Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I am Anna and I'm a little bit spooky and today we are doing a smoky eye using the Urban Decay Shortcut Palette. This has just come as perfect vampy palette so I love. I also threw in some tips and tricks and kind of a little more educational today and more just about how to create a smoky eye rather than focusing on the product which I feel like most of the time I'm more focused on like the colors of product I'm using rather than explaining what I'm doing or why I'm doing what I'm doing and just kind of showing it to you. So today I kind of broke down steps in like why I did a certain thing a certain way or whatever. See so if you want to see how I got this look and learn a little bit about creating a smoky eye and I talk about some of the questions I get some of the frequently asked questions that I get about doing eyeshadow and smoky eyes in this video. So yeah, if you would like to uh, see how we got this look and learn some tips and tricks, just go ahead and keep on watching. But before you do, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below if you would like some more education-based videos. I am down for it. Let me know below. And without further ado, let's get into this look. Okay, hi, hello. I would say good morning, but it is not morning. It is 10 o'clock at night. Priorities, adulting, you know, and we are also drinking cold brew. Picked my poison today. Anyway, I want to do something super dramatic, so let's get into this. We're gonna use a uh, Urban Decay on the Run palette and uh, do something super smoky, super dramatic, and just really full on. So I think I'm gonna start with the shade um, Laced kind of in the transition region first, just to get a nice little base color going up towards the brow. I haven't put anything in my brow bone. I have primed my eyes though with the Milani eyeshadow base and just carved out my brows, but I didn't bring the concealer all over the lids and I haven't like set them down with powder. I'm trying something new. We'll see if it works. So anyway, let's jump with our blending brush and go in with laced first. And pick that up on the tip, knock off the excess and start bringing it through the transition area. Just doing some windshield wiper motions. I'm going straight in and then just blend a little bit here. This is a pretty soft shade so I'm going to blow it out quite a bit and we are going for drama so I'm going to bring it a little bit higher almost to the eyebrow and just into here just to create a nice haze of color. I'm just going to flick it out right there on the outer corner and Blend, blend, blend. This just really gives the eye a lot of contour. This shade is kind of a grayed out mauve or mauve, however you say it. And it just just gives like a, a very much a nice contour. This would actually be a pretty contour shade, I would think. Maybe a little less pink in it. It reminds me a lot of NYX and Taupe. I'm just using mostly windshield wiper motions and then doing a little bit of a swirl. So next I'm gonna take more of a concentrated, kind of flat blending brush, blending brush. This is, I think, just an e.l.f. blending brush, yeah. And you can see that it is flat and a little bit fluffy, and then it is wide when you turn it. And I think we're going to go into Shortcut, and I'm just going to pick a little bit up on it, and I'm going to start bringing that right into the socket. Then I'm going to turn it sideways and kind of windshield wiper blend it. And again, do a little bit of a flicking out action right here. Or motion on the outer corner, just to give the eye some lift. And just let that blend into the previous shade. See, right here would be just a really pretty everyday look. Back to a bigger blending brush. No additional product, we're just gonna blend around that edge. Just doing circular motions just to uh, work the shadow where I want it. Or soften it rather. Next, we're gonna go into, I think, Rendezvous. This time I'm gonna take more of a flat eyeshadow brush like this, and I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of Rendezvous on it, put it right here on the outer corner. Now, you know what, I am gonna actually use the same brush I was using a while ago. We're gonna go back to this guy and really tuck that into the socket. Build up a little more because we are going pretty dramatic with this look. But I'm focusing more of the pigment right out here and then sweeping over. Again, right into that socket. On the outer part here, we're gonna do it again, a little flicking motion. Or just, bloop, just like that. And then just gonna pull back in a little bit. 
I'm gonna go back to my blending brush, taking shortcut on the blending brush once again and going right back into that socket and blending over where we just were, softening the edges of that deeper, deeper shade. Because this is gonna be quite a smoky look, we will be doing a lot of back and forth making sure our shades don't get lost, don't get muddy or anything like that, but they are so well blended. This is a look that you do want to kind of take your time doing when you're doing something very full on and smoky. You don't want to rush it and just slap it on. There's one of the biggest uh, questions I get with makeup is how do you do a smoky eye and not get it looking like eyeshadow exploded on your eye, not be so messy. It's simple, take your time. That's probably the biggest or most important piece of advice I could give you is just really focus, take your time. Practice at night while you're before you go to bed, before you take a shower or something. Just get in there and kind of play, practice, get a feel for the shadows and how they perform, and just experiment a little bit, see what techniques work. Don't wait to the night you're gonna go out to do the smoky eye and make sure you do a lot yourself sometime to sit down and really just turn everything off and focus on what you're doing. I mean you can listen to a show obviously or something in the background, but just really take your time. I feel like a lot of people get in a rush and they just want it done and they expect it to look perfect and it, that's just not how it works. Everything takes time and effort, you know, it's not just some mindless task. Even for me, like as long as I've been doing makeup and doing it on myself even, it's not a mindless task. Like it's relaxing, it's something I can kind of I meditate, kind of just chill out. Even when I'm talking to the camera, I'm still kind of relaxed and enjoying the process and that's one thing that makes the process enjoyable for you. Put you a show on Netflix, something, lock the bathroom door, don't let the kids in, and just chill out. Make it you time and make it a ritual for yourself. That's how I look at it. It's just, and I always have. It's, I've, I've been like that since I was early teens when I first started doing makeup. On my, you know, just playing. It, it was a ritual for me every morning to get up and do makeup and in the evening I'd sit there and play and experiment. And I don't know, it's always, but then again, you know, I have a passion for it and not everybody does. I understand that. So um, to make it as simple as I can for, you know, just the average person that doesn't have time to sit down and play in a lot, an hour and a half to sit there and play with a smoky eye, would you be just to go slow? Don't uh, pile a ton of pigment on your eye and try to blend it. Just really make sure you always knock off your brush, start very, very softly, and then just slowly build and you will have better results if you try that. You know, even just doing something as simple as a wash of color though can really have a good impact, just making sure your edges are blended. So like, I would always recommend having a brush like this. It's a little bit more dense kind of blending brush. Again, this one's from e.l.f. It's a, what, $2. It's a great little brush to get the pigment on and you can do a little bit of blending with it as you can flip it and blend. And then just go back in with a larger blending brush, also from e.l.f. This is just an e.l.f. fluffy brush. Again, $2. Go around it and just blend your edges. You know, and that's going to take a little bit of time on the blending. I, I think it's it's worth it if you if you really want that. That's one thing is you're going to have to devote the time to it if you're trying to do like a really intense smoky eye. There are you know easier ways to do it. Of course, you could always again I say experiment at home. You know, before bed or whatever, before you take a bath in the evening, and just try techniques on yourself and see what works for you. And if you can kind of build a little routine that's achievable that you know you got your little steps you can follow and get it done quickly within a decent amount of time, but don't get impatient and get aggravated because that's just gonna make everything go to We've gotten this far. This is honestly a nice look right here. You could pop a little bit of shimmer right on the lid and you could be done and you know, a little bit of liner. And this would be a nice look just for even a more formal occasion or a nicer occasion or, you know, this to me would be like a nice everyday look right here, just the eyes like that. And I would maybe pop a little bit of sin this lightest shade on the inner corner or something, or a little bit of my face highlighter and be done, call it a day. I wouldn't even probably do any eyeliner. I'd just throw some mascara on because if I'm just doing my everyday makeup, I don't do eyeliner. <laughs> so moving on from that, I'm gonna take that flat brush that we had while ago. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spritz it with a little bit of my finished setting spray. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Natural Finish. Fantastic setting spray, by the way. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spritz the brush and pick up the shade After Hours, which is a super, super fun, deep, vampy shade. We're gonna knock off excess, of course, and we're just gonna start patting that. I'm gonna start out here and just pat. 
I'd also recommend to do your eyes before you do your foundation, especially if you're doing the smoky eye. If you're just doing the soft natural look, don't worry about it. But if you're doing a smoky eye like this or something, definitely just do your eyes first. I personally have just gotten in the habit of doing my eyes first. So that's just kind of how I always do it now. <laughs> Unless I'm just in a hurry, hurry. Wait, I'm just patting that on. Ooh, look at that. That's so pretty. Look at that color. Good job, Urban Decay. And I kind of flick it up a little bit. All right, and just, I'm gonna bring it all the way across the lid, almost to the innermost corner, but not quite. Then with the same brush, I'm just gonna turn on its side and just kind of softly smooth those edges so they're not harsh. Now I'm gonna go back to my first elf brush, or second elf brush rather, the flat, fluffy, blendy guy. And I'm gonna take a little bit more rendezvous on it and just come around this edge and soften it out right back in the socket, kinda. And this will just diffuse the lid shade. And I'm not worried about like a little bit of shimmer getting into my crease. I'm not that, I don't think it's that big a deal. <laughs> it can look a little more editorial even. And it's not like it's gonna really like ruin your look or anything. It's not that deep. Now personally, I really do enjoy taking my time blending and doing eyeshadow just because it, this is like kind of my art, this is my painting. This is something I truly enjoy sitting here and doing so that's why I'm a little bit more I guess involved in it and spend more time on it because I don't mind doing it. I, I, I love it. <laughs> okay it's so back to the fluffy brush, no product on it. I just wiped it off on a paper towel and I'm just gonna take it around these edges and just blend blend blend. Okay, and now I'm going to go back into Rendezvous on that same brush I used on the lid to pack on the shadow. I'm going to take Rendezvous now. It's dried from, you know, it's not wet anymore from the setting spray. And I'm going to kind of pat that just right here on the outer corner to kind of get a little more depth out there. You could also use a black. Would look really good for this part. Oh, look at the fallout. It, it's an Urban Decay shimmer. You're going to get some fallout. That's just... My dog's dreaming, can you hear? But it's just par for the course with Urban Decay's shimmers, is that they do have a lot of fallout. Again, not a deal breaker for me by any means of the palette. That's why we just do our eyes first. And some, I don't always remember to knock my brush off. You know, you just keep blending and tweaking until you're happy with where it is. Like, I think I'm, I'm kind of, like right now I'm happy with this progress, so I'm gonna move on to the next shade. I'm gonna take a little smaller kind of detail brush. I'm going to take sand and I'm going to put it on the inner part right here. Just pat it on. And then we go back to the other brush, clean it off, this flat one, and diffuse the edge. Just going to take, that just gives a little light on that inner corner so it's not so harsh, so dark. Then I'm going to take a little bit more of shortcut. Big fluffy brush and just kind of come around, around these edges. A little bit more definition and to kind of reduce the size of my, my brow bone a little. I think the fallout. And I'm gonna think I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I do that just so you see how I do it. <laughs> I always kind of leave that out. Sometimes I use a micellar water. Um, I really like using my face primer because that way you don't wipe off everything you've done underneath like your primers you have done and your skincare. Take a little bit of your face primer. This is the L'Oreal Magic Perfecting Base. What I'll do is I take a little bit on the back of my hand and then just kind of put a little on the Q-tip here and just, it's like a little eraser. It doesn't pull at your skin, drag, you know, it just wipes the product right off. A little extra priming so it can't hurt. It was with the smoky eyes, start that outer corner right here and just, and cut it off. That will give you a very like lifted effect. If you're going for more a rounded cat eye, I mean rounded smoky eye, of course you can kind of blend around a little more, which you can do, you know, after you go to do your lower lash line at that point. I do my lower lash line after I do my foundation and concealer. Sometimes I do it before, it just depends on my mood. But to make sure that's even though, this is just a shape that I prefer on my eyes because my eyes are a little downturned and my hooded, I kind of... I have a very heavy kind of brow bone, so I like to kind of try to lift it, make things a little bit more snatched looking, if you will. Fallout gone. 
you can just move on to whatever you want to do next. You can either go straight into doing your lower lash line. You just got to be really careful when you're blending your concealer and foundation. Let's move on to some eyeliner real quick. I think I want to use the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Liner just to get a little definition along the lash line and slight wing. I don't want to do like a full on wing or anything. I feel like this look doesn't need it. You know, you got enough going on with the shadow. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the Pillow Talk Liner and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it right along those lashes. This is such a good formula, bulletproof formula. And we're just going to wing it up just a bit, just following where we cut that eyeshadow off. And then you can go back and tidy it up with your Q-tip. I think this burgundy shade would look really cool with this look. So we kind of are playing with those tones already. And that's all I'm going to do for liner and just, just to get that sharpness back again, I'm going to take that same Q-tip just on this little pointy end. I love these. I have the flat end and then the pointy end. And it's dirty because I just used it clean fallout. But they have like the flat and then the pointy. Very handy Q-tips. I'm kind of just uh, bringing that a little bit on the lid on the outer corner. I think that looks cool. <laughs> it just kind of keeps it from having such a harsh line. Maybe we'll take a little bit of that Rendezvous shade and just kind of blend that a little Yeah, okay, that's cool. That looks cool. All right. I don't know if you can see what I was doing. I was like all up in my mirror. <laughs> all right, let me just tidy up one more time, make sure I don't have any fallout. Everything's nice and clean. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and do my face and do my complexion products like contour foundation, powder, concealer, all that sort of thing, not in that order. <laughs> and we'll be back for the lower lash line and, okay, and we are back. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to that lower lash line now. I'm going to take this kind of smudgy flat brush, like I mean, it's a little bit longer than a smudge brush. It's just a nice little dense brush. It's, it's great for right up over the eyes. So I'm gonna go back into, I think I'm gonna go straight into Rendezvous. Knock off the excess and we're gonna go right on its outer corner, real tight to the lash line, as tight as you can get. Uh, you could use a smaller brush for this. Actually, I think I will, now that I'm thinking about it. I'm gonna take that brush from earlier, that flat one. It's just a little bit skinnier than the brush we were using just then. Go back in a rendezvous and take it just right against that lash, as close to the lash line as I can get with it, and blend it up into that wing we have on the outer corner. I'm kind of keeping most of the pigment on one side of the brush and that side facing up. I'm just doing it like about halfway along and I'm just doing real light blending motions as I go. I'm gonna take a little bit of the Pillow Talk liner. I'm thinking about it and just kind of hit right out here on that outer corner and just merge that into the upper wing. I'm just gonna bring it around just a little bit. And now back into that little short, a little bit denser brush, rendezvous, focus more on one side, that side facing up, and blend. And yeah, I like to just kind of squinch my eyes and just come across. All right, now I'm gonna take shortcuts, same brush, same technique, just a little lower. I'm just really trying to keep that intensity under there, but still blended. I'm gonna take that brush from earlier, the blending brush, and a little bit of lace, just ever so slightly. I'm gonna scrunch my eyes up quite a bit and come right underneath. Just kind of blowing that out and bring it up into the upper eyeshadow, of course, making sure everything is nice and cohesive and flowing together as one. And there's no difference between the two. I'm just going to run this outer part with the blending brush just to make sure everything is blended and nice and happy. At this point you could do any touch-ups you need to do, like say you want to bring a little bit more shortcut in right out here. You totally could right now, which I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and do some and highlighter before we jump into, before I go ahead and do my mascara and all that just while we're here. But roughly that's the eyes done. Oh, let me uh, highlight the inner corner just a little bit. I'm going to jump into Sin and just kind of reinforce that shade just right there on the inner, innermost part and kind of on the tear duct just a bit. 
Now let's move on to the blush. I'm gonna take e.l.f. Primer Infused Blush in Always Cheeky. I think it, I thought it said Always Cherry. It's Always Cheeky. Now I'm gonna go into my highlighter, which oh, I did it backwards. So we may flop back to blush in just a minute to blend this out a little. I just totally was excited about doing blush, apparently. I'm gonna use this one from e.l.f. This is White Gold. Okay. Uh, let's do some mascara real quick. I'm gonna go off camera and do that and I'll be right. Let's finish this look off with a little bit of lipstick. I'm gonna first line my lips using the NYX Suede uh, Matte Lip Liner in Vintage. I'm gonna sharpen it first. Now, obviously you could do like a, a nude lip or a peachy kind of lip with this or mauve, whatever floats your boat. But you know me, I can't just do a vampy eye and leave it at that. We, we gotta do a vampy lip too. So I'm gonna just line with this and of course overline a little bit because I mean, I have a little bit of the Bite Beauty lip primer on right now. It just gives the lip liner a nice slip and smooth application also prevents feathering and bleeding. And since we're doing a bold lip, I'm go ahead and fill in a good bit of the lip as well. Now for lipstick, I'm gonna use the Fenty Matte Mademoiselle Matte Plush Lipstick in Griselda. I do have a review of these up on my blog, and uh, yeah, they are fantastic lippies. So yeah, here is the finished look. What do you guys think? I really like it. I think this came out really pretty, and it's not super over the top. I think it's like not an insane smoky eye. It's a very attainable, wearable smoky eye, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like anybody could rock this look and be comfortable with it and feel good about themselves. Let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see more educational type videos like this where I really kind of go through and break down the steps of creating a look or like a smoky eye or a certain technique. I usually just do like, you know, hey, here's a look and here's how I did it. But I, I forget to kind of bring in the education aspect all the time more. I'm just caught up in creating a pretty look and just want to show you how I'm doing it. And I forget to explain why I'm doing certain things and what makes sense, you know, why we use certain techniques when. So if you'd like to see more stuff like that, let me know in the comments down below. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe while you're at it. And uh, yeah, that is all for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you guys in the next one. Stay spooky and stay safe. Bye now.